Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here, ready for your daily dose of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. And we are going to take on another one of the new missions that's available here on Alpha 3. Uh, this is all part of a really long playlist of about 50 videos now that I have on Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. And you can certainly check out all the other videos. Uh, but if you want to be made aware every time new content is made available, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that little bell next to it. And that'll let you know when new videos arrive. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we are going to do this mission. And then tomorrow we will do our first custom battle. And uh, if you're familiar with that, we can choose any era, any time period, any nation, uh, and the makeup of those. Uh, so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as far as what you would like to see the first custom battle be. Uh, and then we will decide from there what we want to do. There will be lots of custom battles to come, but we're going to do our first one tomorrow. But for now, we're going to play Sink the Cruiser Killer. I have not yet tried this mission. An experimental battle cruiser of Japanese technology is destroying our convoys. It's unclear what are the capabilities of this ship, but it is rumored to be unstoppable versus smaller cruisers. That is why it has been nicknamed the Cruiser Killer. Your mission is to trace and sink this ship. Don't let it get away. You can risk attacking the enemy with a number of your best heavy cruisers or one of your own experimental battle cruisers. Four destroyers will assist your effort. I always prefer to go with the better technology, and that's what we're going to choose to do here uh, because better guns, better uh, accuracy, I believe, is better than having a little more money to be able to buy uh, some more armor and things of that nature. So with that said... You can see our basic uh, build here is a modern battle cruiser, and that's what we're going to choose to use. We only have one uh, modern tower that's available to us with that. Uh, two different secondary towers. We're always going to choose the better of the two because I want that accuracy. Those are some cool new towers. These are definitely new for the battle cruiser. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Let's see what we can go up to. We can go all the way up to 18-inch Mark V guns. That's what we want, baby. Uh, so at 20,000 meters, the three-barrel Mark Vs are 8.6% accuracy. Uh, two-barrel goes up to 9.1. Uh, since we're going, we're mainly dealing with one battle cruiser. I think I'd actually rather have the two-barrel and get that little bit of extra. Uh, oh, we can't get 18 inches on that. Barbette. So uh, it's a, you know, it's it's not the thickest of armor that we should be facing. So I think maybe I'd rather have. We'll go with the 16 inches. They'll they'll reload a little faster. We'll throw one on the back. We're obviously going to be dealing with a little bit of a an, a weight offset here. Let's see if we can. That gets us pretty close right there. Um, next things, we need funnels, and let's take a look where we're at right now. 0% uh, engine efficiency, obviously, because we have no funnels. Uh, if we get a mega funnel, that only gets us to... Uh, okay, we can do two mega funnels. That gets us to 34%, which we will then uh, deal with by going to the balance boilers. That gets us our 100%. Um, this is going to double our engine cost, but we've got a long way to go on cost. I'm really only planning to have one battle cruiser when this is all said and done. I want all of the maneuverability and engine that I can have on this thing. So um, maxing out the armor gets us right there. Uh, you can see where we're at with weight. We're going to go with the turtle back armor scheme. Um, Let's see, what else do I want? Oh, I definitely want the best rangefinder available. We're going to get radar as well in case this guy tries to get away from us. Um, high TNT explosives, super heavy shells. Definitely get, I always go with these, the best on these. And, and honestly, I've never been sorry. Uh, I feel like every single time that I've built uh, and I've gone with one single um, ship and I've gone for maneuverability, accuracy, and best weapons uh, as far as the big guns that have good penetration. I feel like I've always been successful with that, so I don't see any reason to get away from that now. Uh, so we're going to continue that with these. Um, at that point now, we've still got about 9,000 in weight. Uh, I think 36 knots is probably going to be good for me. I don't know that I need to change that, really. Uh, we are going to get a few secondary guns 
Well, no, you know what? I don't. I don't think we're dealing with any of his other. I think it's just going to be him. I've got destroyers. I don't know that he does. So we'll probably be okay without secondary, though. You can see there are a ton of places available for secondary guns. Uh, so when I'm doing a mission where I'm going to be up against a big fleet, that'll definitely come in handy. But uh, for the meantime, I think we'll go with a little bit of... Uh, uh, protection here but otherwise I think we're just going to use the cost and weight we have left uh, to go with uh, extended deck armor because I think that's primarily what we're going to be dealing with uh, is going to be protection for the deck or not extended deck armor but just deck armor in general um, I don't know how big his guns are going to be but let's go ahead and I don't know go up to six inches on the turret top we'll go 15 on the front of the turrets will go 15 on the conning tower because I really want to protect those as best I can. We'll go a little higher on the belt though. I'm hoping we're going to be at such a distance that that's going to be less of an issue. Where's that put me? All right, we might go with a little more speed at this point. All right. 37 knots. All right, we're, we're still under on weight, but uh, cost-wise, we're just about there. All right, let's do this. I have no idea what's going to happen. I didn't even change the name of the ship. I probably should have at least done that, uh, but I was in such a hurry. I'm excited to dive into this mission for the first time that I didn't even pay attention to uh, changing the name, so the name's kind of weird. <laughs> it's one I've never heard before. Okay, here we go. So he does have five destroyers. So in hindsight, um, you know, honestly, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, rebuild the ship. We're gonna add some secondaries. We'll reduce a little bit of that speed that we added. Um, I just wanna go ahead and, and make sure that we're prepared for these destroyers. So uh, let's see how these secondaries do uh, with the new uh, update. Uh, they're supposed to be better now. Um, 10,000 meters looks like we're pretty even on two barrel or one barrel, but not as good on eight, on three barrel. So uh, that's what we're going to do here. Doesn't look like it's going to allow me to put eight inch anywhere. So let's go down to six inch. Interesting. It's not letting me put these anywhere on here. Uh, are these consider these can't be considered casemate guns? All right. How about five inch? This is really, really kind of interesting that these towers have all these spots for secondary guns, but it won't actually let me place secondary guns on the towers unless it only allows four inch. Wow, this is really kind of, oh, there we go. That's the first one I've actually seen it let me do, so. All right. So you can see it'll let me place four inch. And for the first time, it's actually given us the option to put those ones on there that kind of face forward or face rear. Uh, so we're gonna add a total of uh, five, 15, 34 inch guns, which uh, won't be that well protected, but that's not a huge deal. I'm not too, too worried about that. Where, where are we on weight now? All right, if we drop a half a knot on speed, we'll be good on weight. So let's go ahead and get a little bit more protection on those secondaries and a little more on the top of the turret. Okay, let's dive back in. Uh, let's change the name too. So um, what nation are we? Oh, we're Italian. I don't even know any good Italian names. Um, let's think about this for a second. Ah, boy. I don't have the first clue what I want to do here. My daughter's reading Romeo and Juliet right now, so we're going to go with the Romeo, all right? Good uh, Italian name that has no historical value whatsoever uh, to the Italian Navy, but what the heck. I could have gone something with something cool like uh, Victor Emmanuel III or something, I guess, but here we are. We're going up against the French with our battle cruiser Romeo, and it looks like we already have sight of the enemy. 
So we're going to go ahead and start turning. And a couple of you noticed that turning does take a little bit more effort now. Uh, it doesn't happen quite as quickly as it did before. That does appear to be the case. Here's this battle cruiser that we've been warned about is so powerful. Uh, he's got, it looks like, three turrets on the rear, one on the front. He's got a number of secondaries as well. So it seems like we're going to be uh, dealing with a, a pretty even matchup here. Let's go ahead and drop down to 26 and see what that does as far as our ability to hit does. Um, I'm just looking at the 119% bonus for long range Texan tower. So you can see why I like choosing the higher technology over the extra money. Now we're starting to get that own cruise speed bonus as we slow down. Romeo's got 9,000 rounds of four inch ammunition, about 900 rounds of the 16 inch. Let's see how close we get to nailing them from the beginning. He may not be in range for me yet. I need to turn. My guns haven't even started turning. Oh, there they go. Finally. So I've got two on the front, so that's ideal for me. That rear one should be in position now to be able to fire. There we go. Let's see how close we get. Oh, we got a hit. Not a lot of damage, but it is a hit. He's coming in now with his destroyers. My destroyers are not in a uh, screening position, so they're not going to do me a lot of good with their smoke over there behind me. I'm going to see how we're, how we're doing on hitting him. Not a great percentage chance. You can see how far away from him some of my shells are landing. We are at 23 kilometers, though. But uh, still, uh, actually, I'm losing some of my long-range tech and tower bonus. Now it's coming back again. But I, I added the own crew speed bonus. We have landed two hits so far. But not a lot of damage from those. I'm going to actually go ahead and switch over to the high explosive and see what that does. So here come, these should be our first high explosive shells. I don't know if any of them are going to actually hit. Doesn't look like they are. Might get a hit here. Nope, not even close. We only need to sink the battle cruiser to win the fight. We don't have to sink anything else. Oh, he just got his first hit on me, but it was a looks like a partial penetration. All right, if these are accurate, we're going to get some hits. Oh, just short, right in the water in front of him. Come on, I want to get a hit with the high explosives and see what they do. No, not penetrating. Okay. I guess we're better off with the armor piercing after all. Once we get identification, we'll get a lot more information about what we're up against here. My destroyers are getting into a screening position now. Yeah, his are deflecting off of me too. I might be able to angle just a little more toward him and still keep the ability to fire with all three turrets. 
he definitely seems like he's firing more rapidly than I am, so he's probably got smaller guns. Those are probably, I don't know, 14 inch. We'll find out soon when we get the identification. It'll cause a little bit of flooding, but still not a ton of damage going on here. But I stand by what I said. Accuracy and better weapons always seems to win the day in these missions where you're involving trying to just take out one or two ships. Or even a bigger fleet, I don't know. Um, I just, maybe it's just my play style in particular that works for that. How far are we? We're about, about 17 kilometers out. We probably don't want to get a lot closer than that. Then we start to lose the advantage that I have in accuracy. There, we got a nice hit. So we're getting hits, no major damage. You can see a nice hole right there in the front. I love getting this view right here. He's got three mega turrets, interesting. Once we identify, I'll be curious to see a little more information about him. He's also got some some varying degrees of secondary guns, at least three or four, not four different kinds. He's got all these, oh, that's cool. Look at these, these are probably casemate guns up here, or maybe just secondaries, but he's got a ton of guns on those towers, smaller ones. That's pretty cool. I'm curious, I'll be curious to see when we get the identification, just how many of the various kinds of guns he's got. I finally took a hit. He does, yeah, 14 inch guns. That's uh, my guess, my guess was right there. Only did partial penetration. There's a hole right there in the top. That's kind of awesome. These are gonna miss. Yeah, we're still not close enough for good accuracy. I wanna make sure we're on auto. We're getting a warning. Looks like there must be some torpedoes in the water. My destroyers have to be careful here. Oh, there's a whole bunch of torpedoes in the water coming from those destroyers. This is all ir irrelevant, really. Now, this is kind of a secondary um, to the main fight, which is between our two battle cruisers. And I must have got a big hit while we were away. 376 damage from an ammo detonation from my 16 inch guns. Very nice. Right here, it looks like. Maybe it was up here. That might have been the front one. Nah, it was mid-belt. That had to have been the center area here. Oh, that one deflected. In this case, if this were in a campaign where it wouldn't just matter about killing one ship, um, I would still want to go after this, the Richelieu first, and then worry about those destroyers. And I'd probably keep my destroyers closer to me uh, so that they could have the protection instead of kind of going one-on-one -on -one against these destroyers. Uh, Richelieu, 51,000 tons, 14-inch uh, guns, 7-inch guns. Uh, there's 4-inch uh, guns of varying types, 3-inch and 2-inch. Man, that thing is fired up with, ar with armament. Looks like it had a some damage to the rudder that's now been repaired which is why it's trying to get away from me it's going to run now uh, so now we're going to go back to full speed and we're going to catch on uh, this guy's got uh, the exact same high speed as me or maybe just a half a not more i can't remember if i dropped to 36 or if i'm still at 36 and a half but he's not getting away from me not with the damage that he's already got and i've got two turrets up front so it'll be perfect for pursuit I'm actually getting over penetration right now, which tells me it's time to go to high explosives. Looks like some of my secondary guns are firing on his destroyers now. 
Oh, it looks like all my guns. Oh, the dreaded target switch. Are you kidding me? I had this guy down by that much damage. We were getting hits on him, and now you want to change to the other target? Uh, some of you have uh, rightly mentioned that that is an ongoing frustration with this game that I hope they will correct. Is this target switch that happens without your permission? All right, do we have some torpedoes coming my way here? Yeah, we do. We're going to turn. And we're not going to turn in time. I should have turned the other way. We're going to get hit by one or two of those. Not a huge deal. Oh, that was a huge deal. So I took two. They did a decent amount of damage, but I probably should have slowed down and paid more attention to that. But I've got him so close to death that I honestly just had kind of a one-track mind there. The mindset completely changes when this is a campaign, because then you're much more worried about protecting your vessel. You know, all I need to do is, is sink this guy, and that's it. It doesn't matter what happens with my destroyers. His destroyers can sink mine to their heart's content. Nothing matters except sinking this battlecruiser in this case. But I guess I probably should start approaching this differently. Um, just because I should be training myself for doing this properly. Uh, I'm up really close to his destroyers now, which means they're going to get some more hits on me. Uh, you can see my engines are damaged. But again, I'm really only one or two big hits away from sinking the Richelieu, and then it's not going to matter. But, you know, this, is, this would be a disaster of a mission for me if it were a campaign, because I'm, I've taken a lot of damage to my battlecruiser that would require a lot of money and time and repairs in a campaign. But in here, it doesn't matter. And of course, the damage hasn't so far affected my aim too much. I've got a little bit of damage instability, but nothing major. I'm only 12 kilometers away from this guy. You can see my, my smaller guns are getting some... Uh, some big hits now on his destroyers. Boom, nice. It's funny that his front turret is pointed that way. I mean, what's the point of that? There's no reason to do that ever. Now we got an ammo detonation on one of his destroyers from a hit. So my small guns are doing their job. I'm really not even paying attention to what's happening back there, and I really should be just in case, because, hey, he hits me with a couple of torpedoes before I finish off this battle cruiser. None of this matters a whole lot. So you can see my small guns. They're getting the hits. My big guns continue to... They've got a 60% chance of penetration right now. ton of small gun hits happening on his destroyers. Nothing major in damage, but it'll add up, it'll accumulate. And it looks like it's gonna do the trick, at least on the tri triumphant. Secondary guns definitely doing the job. I wish I had bigger secondary guns, but those are probably only going to be for a battleship. All right, Richard, you done yet? Oh yeah, real close now. cool thing is even at this distance you can see the uh, the explosions as the guns leave or as the uh, projectiles leave their guns even from here all right let's go back and see what's happening here we're coming right up alongside this destroyer 
Richelieu's at 4%. Don't want to miss the sinking if it happens. We're at that place now where it's kind of a hit or miss depending on where, where you actually land the shells and most of them are landing in the rear. All the way along. Fire kind of pouring out of some of those. My destroyers are getting a lot of, uh, of hits on his destroyers. They're not doing a lot of damage, but they're getting the hits. I want to see these come in. Uh, we switched back to armor penetration, and that did the trick. First couple ricocheted, but then we got it. So there you have it. So as I said before at the beginning of the video, let me know your comments either about this, but also especially about tomorrow's video, which will be our first custom mission. Who do you want to see fight? What do you want to see? Let me know all your parameters uh, for that, and we'll take some of the best ideas, and we'll see what we can come up with. As always, drop a like. Please subscribe if you haven't already. See you again soon. Thanks for watching.